So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar that is co-hosted by Red Pill Impro and WSO2. And during this uh, webinar, we will hear from Anupama Sharma from ICA on how ICA went about when they choose and implemented a single platform to manage all their APIs. But before I hand over to Anupama, I thought I would give you, give you just a short introduction to the topic and also a short introduction to the ones that we do with the presentation here at the event. During the webinar, you will be asked a couple of poll questions. Uh, please answer to them during the, 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 the talks and, 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 and the things that we hear here. And also, if you have any questions to the uh, panelists or if you have any questions during the event, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the uh, Zoom screen. Uh, and we will take care of as many questions as we can at the end of the presentations at the end of the event. So good to see you all here and looking forward for an interesting hour of presentations around the topic of choosing a single platform to manage APIs. But before we go there, uh, as said, I thought I would give you an introduction to the topic and what we are supposed to talk about here today. My name is Fredrik Svensson. I am actually one of the co-founders of Red Pill, the Swedish original part of Red Pill Impro Association or Corporation. So I've been around in the company for more than 20 years doing various stuff. My current title is as CBDO, which means that I do a lot of different stuff, mainly within APIs and integration. Red Pill Impro is a Nordic company. Uh, we have offices in Sweden, Norway and Denmark. Uh, currently just above 300 employees servicing our, our, our customers from seven various offices. And with a foundation in open source, we support our customers within six various solution areas. Those are APIs and integration that we will talk further more about today. Cloud, the digital workplace, data analytics, DevOps, and an area that we call digital experience or customer experience where we work with end user solutions. The topic of today is around integration and API management. So to just give you a short overview on, on the topic, uh, we consider APIs to be the real gateway to your digital backbone and the uh, solution that enables digital innovation, really. And why is this? Well, we consider business information or data as core today, core business. Data is often stable. Applications may vary. So you need to create a way to interact with data in an efficient way uh, and not through applications. Data is owned and managed by the core business, which is actually the only true efficient way to scale. And data is exposed, discovered, and consumed as data through the backbone using APIs. This enables self-service and a new operating model for digital innovation. And this is something that's happening now. Uh, a lot of organizations have already started their API journeys or API-led integration journeys. We see that when we work with government agencies that work with more efficient exchange of data between government agencies, we are helping financial services organizations cooperate with these uh, governmental agencies to prevent or discover fraud and money laundering. We are seeing that we are using APIs to create access to internal information for joint business development, increase cooperation, and in general, creating a more efficient business. And internal APIs can also be used between core systems to enable more efficient information flow, increase interoperability and business development. And lastly, we're also seeing that quicker app development is enabled through the use of APIs within various organizations in various industries. But with all this said, there are also some challenges with the implementation of many new APIs. Today, everybody basically is building APIs how to find the correct information or API. Uh, in many API management platforms today, there's also a mesh of internal and external APIs available. How can you sort of differ between them and how to go about to use these various APIs? And in many cases for larger organizations, it might also be that you have several different API gateways. There might be that you have a gateway connected to your ERP system, you might have a gateway connected for external facing APIs and so forth. How to sort of connect these to each other and how to make these operate together. So all this creates challenges related to maintenance, documentation and overview. And this is a topic that we will talk about further today. 
Another topic and another challenge when implementing a lot of APIs is, of course, security. APIs are already not the, the number one attack vector for hacker, hackers today. So how do you ensure that accessed or inserted information is given to the right user or system? How to keep track and control of all your APIs so that security risks are not built or designed in? And how to assure that the real or the intended system is accessing your information and not someone else? This is a topic that will not be addressed so much today, but I would like to give a heads up on that we are doing a series of events in Sweden on May 9th and 10th on this topic. First, we will have a breakfast event in Stockholm on May 9th, and then we will go to Sundsvall on May 10th to talk a little bit more about identity and access management related to APIs. So please look into these links if you're interested in those topics. These links are also available through the Red Plimp Pro and WSO2 web pages. So going back to the challenge of managing a lot of APIs. Today we will hear uh, from Anupama Sharma from ICA about roadblocks that was faced by ICA when implementing a single gateway for APIs, how these were addressed, why ICA chose the WSO2 API manager, and what kind of positive results that brought for ICA's operations and revenue. So with that said, I'm handing over to you, Anupama, to take it away from here. Yep. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Frederick, for uh, giving a lot, good brief about what APIs are and how security is really important for organization. So thanks for that. And I'm sharing my screen. Please let me know if uh, everyone can see it. Yes, we can see your screen, Anupam. So, uh, thanks. And so we start with ECAS journey to AWS or two as an API manager platform. So, and uh, a little bit about, I will start a little bit about me, what I do. So myself is Anupama Sharma and I'm working as an IT professional from last 11 years and in ECA for four years, I'm, I'm uh, having a role of API product owner. And with lot, like a lot of other developers, I spend a lot of my time with computer screens and nowadays from last four years with APIs. And in one of the internal webinar, I, uh, with, which was in ECA, I said that, yeah, I'm sleeping, eating and repeating APIs at ECA. So that's how I'm famous in ECA for APIs and managing APIs, controlling, having security, designing. So that's what I do right now at ECA. And when I'm not doing APIs, I will be definitely interacting with some other APIs to, you know, how I can travel and explore the new world. So, uh, yeah. So I think myself as a multi-talented third person, uh, apart from APIs, I do other uh, stuff like Kafka, microservices. So, yeah, that's about me. And let's uh, continue our discussion how we solve uh, and use APIs at ECA using WSO2 API Manager as a product. So, just a minute. And yes, there is a classic moment which we all share over here that, yeah, we interact with a lot of customer every day. They are our customer, they want everything, and sometimes they don't know what they want but they want it today or yesterday. So we have to uh, you know, uh, deal with such kind of scenarios when we are uh, we at ECA pro provide a platform to publish or consume APIs within five minutes. So they want it yesterday, but they want to know how to design and those kinds of stuff. So that's what we're gonna discuss. Before that, uh, a little uh, about our agenda. So you should know what ECA is, why, you know, in, I, at, in Sweden, it's so famous and what, uh, what this case study benefit for your organization, how, what you should take away from this webinar. So yeah, now that's what we're gonna discuss in our agenda. The top challenges that we had, like uh, what uh, we identified as a challenge that we are gonna discuss. And we discuss a little bit brief about it and how we overcome this challenge. 
And since you know that the uh, API, WSO2 API manager at ECA is at from last four years. So definitely we did the life cycle management of this project as well. And we uh, evaluated this platform again. So we choose this platform again in 2022 with the new capabilities. That's also we're going to discuss. And we deployed the ECAS uh, architecture, which right now we are deployed. We have deployed. It's a single management, single API management platform. How we are using it, and how you should, uh, you know, think about when you are designing this kind of architecture. What kind of things you should keep in your mind when come it comes to your organization. The key features that we have at ECA. API management platform because we all know WSO2 API manager is an open source platform and you can customize it. So what key features that we have built with the help of Red Pill Lint Pro uh, and they are uh, serving a lot of KPIs and SLAs for us. So those key features we're going to discuss and then we will discuss a little bit about what monitorings and volumes we are talking about at ECA. So with that said, yeah. A little bit about ECA, what it is exactly. So ECA is a group in and is a retail company in Sweden. It's focused on good food and good health. So the group includes, it's it, since it's a group in, it's not one organization we are dealing here. It has multiple subsidiaries. It has a, 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 gro a grocery retail and real estates, Aquatec and ECA Banken and ECA Finance Services as well. So, and that means we have multiple APIs, which is within the organization, which we call in our world as internal APIs, interacting and transferring data, which is important for each uh, domain or opco, you can say. So that's what is it's ECA is. ECA has a very big business in retail stores. Uh, most of our grocery stores we have and the pharmacies and then our ECA bank. So uh, when we talk about ECA stores, there are a lot of things happens around the stores. And that is via APIs at ECA right now. So the top challenges that we have, like when we don't have uh, API management in 2017 at ECA. So what are the challenges we had? So the, definitely each organization have some technical challenges and some business challenges. And there, that gap, we have to, we being a integrator of this kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, things uh, like between the technical and the business uh, challenges, we have to reduce the gap and marry them at one place. So everyone knows and understand, yes, we are safe when using this platform. So the technical challenges we had was, yes, definitely the security risk. Everyone talks about security risk. Everyone talk about data hacking. So when we don't have an API management platform, you go for some other proxy scenarios, but you don't know who, how to control that because everyone just can uh, come and you know start uh, using your proxy endpoint, but would, you don't know what, where they are coming, who they are, how to block them. You don't want to block your own whole service. You want to block the problematic system, which is creating issues for you. So yes, we had security risk. Lack of scalability, definitely. If you don't use an API management platform, like you uh, go with some proxy solution like firewalls and those kinds of stuff, then it is have problems in you know scaling. So, but if you have API management platform, you can scale your APIs, you scale your infrastructure, a lot of things that capability you will have. So, sorry. Uh, inconsistent API design. And this is a very classic one when you are in a big organization, even in the smaller organization, you have two teams working on different uh, uh, API designs and APIs, uh, 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 what is the schema definition on authentication and authorization. So it becomes very in, uh, inconsistent between the teams and to marry them at one place becomes more difficult for an integration team because they don't know how to yeah, they have to build small plugins, start uh, making those kinds of plugins 
to you know uh, get the data transfer from one team to the another team or one organization to the other other organization within the within big organizations so this can lead to a problem like uh, yeah i have one api but yeah it has different kind of authentication and authorization you need to build something that's kind of things you will face uh, then insufficient resource utilization yeah there are some teams which i personally have uh, uh, you know observed they say oh yeah this is very easy to deploy api management platform i can deploy mine yes you sure go ahead there's no issue with that but you should understand that when you will deploy when each uh, small team starts deploying their own api management platform the number of resource that you are using is quite high so everyone will have like minimum two uh, servers at their own end and then you know uh, each team and then you have to have managed lot of infrastructure so you don't know why this resource everything is doing maybe the same stuff but you are using a lot of resource in your own organization which is not cost efficient in time like this when people all of us are talking about cost efficiency so these are the main technical challenges if uh, you don't have api management platform but when it comes to organization they have business challenges also and at eka yes we do have a lot of business challenges and out of them i have list down few main ones so eka as i said is not a uh, it's a, it's not one organization it's subsidized of uh, a lot of small organization like eka group and eka bank and first cater and acotech so the uh, we have to marry all these four organization and cater all of their api requirements and when i talk about api requirements we might all of us knows that some uh, organization have kpis of i want my api to have 1 milliseconds uh, response time i want 2 milliseconds uh, 2 seconds i want this kind of authentication that kind of authentication bank has different sla and retails have different sla so marry marrying them on one platform was was our big challenge at eka how we manage it then another big challenge is like we uh, are using a third party key manager or, or you can say iam service so we have to integrate that also this kind of um, uh, when you have centralized key uh, third party key manager that helps a lot in organization in terms of when you try to build some kind of omni channels where multiple uh, access tokens are traveling between the microservices and then each microservice needs to trust that kind of uh, access tokens so in that case you have to have, have a centralized platform where you can integrate with your centralized uh, third party key manager as well self service every person at eka wants self service and that was very easy to say right uh, at uh, when we started in 2017 but it was very difficult to implement because some some teams in e, at eka wants complete automation some wants import export of the apis and some does not even want any kind of review on their apis so yeah self service is little bit uh, difficult but yeah we are able to achieve at eka uh, and so these are the top challenges that we had when we were selecting api management at eka so and these are our uh, um, subsidies that we have at eka so how we solve this challenges so we made all our business and technical challenges as our baselines and we exper we, we start experimenting with different lot of solutions like a azure api management wso2 apg and others as well at uh, in 2017 but we opted for wso2 api manager at 20, uh, in year 2018 so it was like 6 to 7 8 months of investigation which platform to opt for and then the main reason was uh, open source as i said in the beginning Uh, you can do a lot of innovative stuff with this uh, platform easy integration with third key, party key manager that was our business challenge that we had and we kind of uh, was very happy when we came to know that yeah you can have virtualization on top of your 
servers, you can have tenant based architecture, you can separate all your um, subsidized uh, or tenants API or domains API. So retail can go in one tenant and bank can go in another tenant. So we were very happy with that kind of feature and easy to onboard the APIM developer. When you see quick start of a WSO2 API manager, it's like two minutes job, publish the API and you, your pizza shack API is ready. So that kind of uh, uh, onboarding we also followed at Eka and people were happy. And we also got 24 seven support from the WSO2 product team, which was really nice from the, uh, from the product team side. But as we know, uh, as I said, we have to change we keep on this, this digital era is keep on letting us evaluate evolution evaluating our decisions and everything so in 28 uh, 2022 or 2021 uh, late i would say eka the eka api community developers start thinking about is this platform is enough because uh, they start having problems in managing different credential, lot of tenants, they have feel like APIs are scattered and uh, they want to use, they want API manager in cloud as well. We have, we at Eka have uh, multiple cloud vendors and the services start moving into cloud infrastructure. So what to do there? And if you, if, I think most of our, all of us have this kind of problem that you have on-prem infrastructure, you have some services in, Azure, and then the service which you want to consume in uh, other kind of uh, cloud integration platforms like uh, Azure or GCP, you, you there is a latency. Why a person who wants to consume service needs to go from your on-prem platform to, uh, to your cloud platform and then gets the response back? Why it can't connect to the cloud platform directly? Why cloud to cloud? Uh, services needs to come to on-prem and then consume another service, which is in a cloud service. So this kind of, uh, um, what you say, mesh, we have started feeling at Eka, and we were start preparing what to do next. It's two years only that when uh, e, uh, the WSO2 API manager 2.2.0 version has been installed in Nika, been very used. A lot of APIs have been already into the platform now, what we should do. And also, we also know that now uh, another type of APIs are coming into the market, async APIs, server sent APIs, GraphQL, web, web hooks, and uh, RPCs APIs as well. What should we do? So these are, I think all of us have this kind of uh, discussion chat are about our API management platform in our organization. So what we did, we again evaluate everything and why we choose uh, WSO2 API manager platform ag again. Obviously one was the positive experience from our previous uh, uh, experiment and analysis. The cost effectiveness, yes, it is. If you installed, if you plan, if you do things correctly, the cost, the comparison of WSO2 plat API Manager platform is really good. So it is very cost effective, robust feature. As I said, we customize this platform. We still make sure the platform makes sure that the security is still intact and is still placed, and also the. Uh, other features are not getting affected once we change other one interface or the interfaces. So these are the small, uh, what I would say, uh, feedback from our ECAS API, API manager community that this is uh, the platform is good, doing good. All we need to do um, uh, is you know upgrade this platform. We need to ha have make this platform more uh, you know efficient with the new uh, digital era. So then we definitely had a lot of discussion in 2019 and 2020 with the API uh, WSO2 API managers product team. Uh, so we they uh, then we start with the ev evolving or evolution with this uh, platform. Now this platform, the 4.0 version, which we are using at Eka from last one year, is in uh, uh, cloud. It's a it is cloud native. It is automated, uh, the whole deployment and even API deployment on the infrastructure deployment, product deployment is automated. 
and inbuilt API testing in uh, Publisher that we have. Uh, everyone might have seen that feature. It's very good. So you can, when you are your API is in discovery phase, you can kind of uh, test your API. You don't need to subscribe it again, those kinds of problems that we had in previous platform. And monitoring and traceability, logs and integration is the, what I was a very nice feature that we have. And um, today I don't have uh, the details about uh, how our uh, loggings looks like in our centralized platform, but uh, I will definitely in some other webinar show you that how the logging things we are able to um, achieve because we have multiple gateways and all in Azure, uh, in our cloud platform and on-prem, everything is logging at one place and you see your API, how it is behaving in Azure or Google or at on-prem. Single sign-on single API store, which like from, we move from our tenant architecture to single place and we control everything at one place only now. Performance, uh, yeah, definitely when I said that on-prem to on-prem and cloud to cloud, and then even the, the APIs where, you know, you have to uh, connect from on-prem to your cloud uh, infrastructure, those kinds of fine tuning is also we have done. Support, uh, obviously the support from the product team. One of another best feature that I want to add here is the database independency. The whole platform that we have right now at Eka is database independent. What it means, it means we can run our gateway without connecting to control plane for days and months even. We have tested that and it works. So that's, that is the most important feature that also as a demand we had towards WSO2 product team that we want next version of the product to be like this. And yes, they have uh, uh, catered that and this platform is running database independent right now. It depends how you install, what uh, kind of uh, uh, deployment pattern you choose. So that's up to you uh, and your organization. So this is the main reason that's uh, why we choose the WS2 uh, API manager platform again. So this is our uh, hybrid deployment architecture. Uh, if you see here, this uh, in the middle, we have Eka governance layer. So we are at the heart of everything. The whole, um, what is a security team, the admin team, even the uh, automation, the validations, everything is in the middle. And we have API developers here and API admin team, which we, uh, we are. So if uh, that's how it works, the API developers publish their API using the automation and standard, uh, what you say, repository, and then you can use uh, Jenkins, big, big bucket, anything to uh, deploy your API into the store. And then, as I said, we have hybrid deployment architecture, which is known as a distributed uh, gateway pattern or thing in uh, WSO2 API manager. So we have our cloud infra, we have on-prem infra, and we have only gateway profiles running there. And API store is, uh, the centralized API store is uh, in our uh, central layer. So there, everyone publish the API and whenever our admin team has to deploy any kind of uh, update of the platform of the infrastructure or the patch of the platform, we'd, we'd also use the centralized repository. We publish it into our automation or build tool. And then uh, definitely when you deploy something in Azure uh, in your cloud platform or in your on-prem platform, the scripting and everything changes. You need to use some different kind of tools. So in our case for on-prem infrastructure, we use uh, Ansible and for cloud infrastructure, we are using Helm. And there are a lot of things like you can use Bicep, you can use uh, Chef also, depends on what your organization support, but everything uh, as of now, we have automated it. And then everything, whatever, as I said, our logging is also a beautiful thing that we are able to achieve at Eka with the help of WSO2 API management team. So all logs are in our central logging platform and index, indexing. So anything happens in, uh, in our platform with the API, et cetera, it gives an alert to the API developer and the admin team as well. 
and we have one centralized governance or what you say a teams channel we have where we people come and give us a feedback immediately that something with your deployment or my api has happened i need help so this guy this is in this way we have uh, what do you say uh, made it as a fast feedback loop for us and our vendors are completely outside and our e application are completely outside of this they don't know what's happening behind but all they know is like oh, yeah i need to connect to this uh, gateway i have my oh, got my own credentials i need to connect and i get the uh, my uh, data from the system so this is how we have centralized it and uh, now uh, we are uh, running with this platform now and anything goes wrong with the build go also sends a notification to the teams channel that uh, there is a problem uh, with your build and then the everyone it's i can do like i can send notification to admin team only but since as i said we have we, our own apim community inside eka and th that consists of 400 api developers right now so everyone is aware yes something has gone wrong with their deployments or uh, something with happened uh, with their environments so they are aware that something has uh, you know affected the platform and the api that helps them to uh, also send notification to their consumers uh, that you know there is there is a downtime uh, or there is a problem at the platform they don't need to search in their own system they know something happened in our system so that's a very transparent kind of uh, system that we have at eka right now so then i will go what are the technical results after doing this we were able to achieve one first is like one integration platform and everyone knows uh, like uh, this is also a term which is coming uh, in the market nowadays integration as a service so we are helping our, uh, uh, or what you say, organization in uh, giving integration as a service, as a platform at Eka. So, and also we have custom authentication, as I said, which is also very big requirement for us. Internal APM developer com community that like 400 people we have, they help us testing our own platform. They fast feedback if something grows with the, like we, if our test cases miss a small, uh, what do you say, feature or something like that, they, the, we have our own inbuilt community, which help us in figuring out, yes, uh, you know, this patch has this kind of uh, small issues. And the small issue is generally I see as a uh, performance only. Self-service, yeah, uh, now we have a lot of um, like REST APIs and then up import, export. So those kinds of automation we were able to achieve. Customize key manager, average response time uh, for us is uh, 100 milliseconds in our not average cases, but the fastest that we have is 10 milliseconds. And that generally take, uh, that's the time between gateway and the backend generally we have, but the un inside process and everything we have fine tuned it so much with the token synchronization and the customization of our key manager and gateway that um, to, uh, we are able to achieve that uh, response time with the help of, uh, I would say, the whole team that works with us. So these are our te technical significance after implementing this architecture and approach uh, we got. But yes, business also definitely have some kind of uh, key significance. What improved integration? Business has more control on, yes, uh, this uh, integration is uh, connecting this source from this uh, via uh, WSO2 platform towards this backend, how many transactions we have, how many, like if we can do some kind of fine tuning, if we can, you know, integrate two APIs and make as one single product, that kind of innovation we can do, we can have service catalogs. So that's what business is able to have more, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, view on the platform right now, but when we have single uh, market, API marketplace. Better data inside, definitely, as I said, yeah, we have like a lot of data in our logs and we do a lot of analysis on it, like which API has, was behaving beyond last day or what, what change has affected it, what system gone, going into the this kind of issues. So improve customer experience. As I said, we are very transparent. If we have some issues, we definitely uh, tell our customers this, this, our, this a systems of our has issue from this to this time. 
we have support as you know that eka is uh, more on a grocery store we have millions of devices millions of uh, what i would say uh, store devices post devices which is uh, you know uh, which we are connecting in a secure and authenticated way and as a, an easy partner integration and also facilitating uh, facilitating integrations as a service is our b business key results so uh, now the last part of my presentation uh, is uh, monitoring and volumes we are running with seven servers as in the beginning i said the technical challenges was like stability use cost efficiency and better infrastructure utilization we have seven servers only we are running five gateways the number of apis is 900 plus in, a, in our platform we have per month 1.4 billion transactions and per day we have 47 million transactions the average load that a platform the seven servers can take is uh, at on prem we have 930 tps per second transactions per second and in cloud we have 1200 uh, uh, transactions per second but this is normal scenarios i mean this can the, anybody can vouch that yeah this can be done by one server why you are using seven servers but our peak loads when we have issues uh, in the platform uh, not in the platform i would say in other systems like they have some maintenance they have some patching and they suddenly come up and start sending lot of data and those peak loads uh, we are able to cater with these seven servers so at on prem we have 8250 and during our uh, what i would say incident scenarios where you know lot of data is coming so 8000 tps per second and for cloud gateways we have 5610 transactions per second so that's a lot when the graphs look very nice when we have this kind of uh, uh, incidents in uh, uh, eka or we have lot of data coming or tr transactions coming at, at eka lesson learned as i said self service is really good but a lot of governance and things needed infrastructure and networking is very important to understand before you start because if you don't if you don't calculate your infrastructure correctly you land up in having lot of issues like yeah it can work on this or operating system maybe not this operating system have that issues maybe i need to scale what type of scaling i should do horizontal or vertical scaling and network is also very important for you you and your organization to understand because you should have some green ch channels where uh, api manager should be able to connect to the backends without uh, raising firewall request you should have like they, those firewall request sometimes take weeks or sometimes months depends on how what type of um, channel you have with your network team so you must have a better network understanding and how to install it in a secure way you should not be putting your your system into a um, light uh, secure network it should be very secure network where api manager get installed and how it connects to other system that also needs to be very secure and you should have understanding of that yes integration and patterns and architecture is also very important lesson you should understand what kind of integration pattern your organization is having like we have five internally but we at the api design phase only discuss a lot with them where you want to expose this api why who going to consume it what kind of authentication authorization uh the vendor can support what we can support what other team can support so those kinds of uh things you should discuss before onboarding the api because onboarding api is very easy but the things around it and its future uh, uh you should discuss at api design phase and then only you should implement and also api manager as of now i mean we are use, it should be used for a uh, fast and real time integration if you start using like yeah you can use multi part form data but i need to transfer files those kinds of stuff you will face issues if they are less in number fine but if they are many then you should look for something else do not use api management platform for everything also this is also one bigger uh, lesson or guidance and at eka is like 
you are not allowed to use everything in api management platform because it supports everything but if you want it to be fast real time you should use it for what it's supposed to do you should not like i can add more mediations and make it as a enterprise service pass no you should think what your organization wants it and produce a proper uh, integration product which may wso2 platform also have others you should use those instead of using api management platform capability so that's what is our lesson learned i hope you got a lot of insight about eka and uh, uh, eka's api management platform so this is how our grocery one of our grocery store looks alike and this is how i used to see the api uh, eka i would say uh, before implementing api management platform but uh, everything which you see as a banner or boards looks like to me now as apis so I, when i enter now into e customer i see oh this is a api that is a api th this is the api so less vegetables more apis <laughs> for me so uh, with this i i am done with my presentation and i'm very happy and uh, what i would say excited that uh, i have got time to discuss uh, eka with you guys i would say so then we go to our next do if we have any questions and somebody wants to discuss few stuff to start with thanks anupama for a great presentation it was very interesting both for sort of people that are already using wso2 or using another api management platform or maybe considering to start using an api management platform it was a, a lot of great insights so thanks a lot for that uh, i would like to start with a question from my end and that question is what has been your or what has been the biggest surprise for you personally in this project uh, the biggest surprise uh, I got with the uh, when I interact with the API developers in the Eka e e API developer community, and they come with the requirement. Uh, we just want uh, our APIs to be published, and we are in the API design phase. And then we were like, "Okay, yeah, sure, we can do it. No issues. We want authentication, authorization. Everything is in build the platform." but um, i want sla of uh, 1 millisecond and that is very hard to achieve and then the, we are kind of you know and then i cross question them why why it's important for you and then they say uh, so we have some campaigns and we have 2 million people they will be filling those campaigns and those stuff uh, and then we will be receiving those transaction uh, what you say synchronously if you add what well, let's say 200 millisecond latency and then you multiply by 2 billion so you know how long my data will take to transfer and these things surprise and challenge us every day uh, keep us uh, motivating to so do something better so yeah that's the big surprise sometimes we get at eka but that sounds good on palma so no matter what um, even if you've done a great project there's always challenges uh, that sort of exists or that's something you have to challenge uh, challenges you have to meet of course during the data data operations and data work so that's interesting and also my next question is what is the next step for eka when it comes to api strategy and api management yeah so um, i would say as i said we are pretty much uh, good with the fast real time integrations but eka is very evolving and now we are looking for asynchronous uh, APIs, like streaming APIs, how we can enable streaming within an authenticated and authorized way. Uh, so that's what our next uh, big step in, at Eka is. Okay. That's cool. Thank you, Anna Palma. I can't see that we have any questions from the audience, but if anyone has a question, please feel free to use the Q&A button at the end of at the, at the bottom of the screen to uh, to share your questions with Anna Palma or myself or anyone else uh, if and if you have any question that sort of appears after the webinar has closed feel free to email them to me and I will make sure that they are forwarded to Anna Palma or WSF2 so you get your so you get an answer to that
Okay. I don't think, uh, let's see, maybe I have a question here. Yeah. yeah, I have a question from, from someone who asks if you have any experience with WSO2 and Kubernetes. Yes, <laughs> that is our uh, uh, current running platform. So uh, we are hybrid, our control plane and one of the data plane is in Kubernetes. Uh, to make it more secure, we have two different Kubernetes cluster for one for control plane and one for data plane. Uh, so yeah, we do have, and all our deployments goes, we use Helm's, Helm chart to deploy the stuff in Kubernetes cluster. Yes, we do have. Okay, that sounds good. And then one final question. I also have a question from one of the participants that asks, if you would redo the project, what would you do then differently? I think I have the same experience. Uh, last year only I redid the project. And this time we were very efficient in our uh, uh, user onboarding guidelines and all. So definitely users are having different kind of expectation. I would like to, next time when I do it, I will be more better in, uh, you know, having, set, uh, what do you say, preparing the user manuals. So they use the platform the way we want them to use. But yeah, everything is a little bit, uh, uh, what I would say, if from the user perspective, I would say it's changed a lot. So I would uh, be better in uh, uh, manual and all, I would say. Okay, sounds good, Anupama. And then I have a question also related to uh, tech, I think. It, it, it goes like this. Do you use default WSO2 like monolith gateways or now more micro gateways like Corio Connect? Okay, uh, we have uh, different flavor, uh, both implementation, but we, for our main implementation uh, where we have like one single platform for everyone, that is monolith. And we have gateway profiles. So the control plane is completely separate. It's a di distributed pattern, as I said. So the complete uh, control plane is completely separate and uh, we have only gateways, gateway profile running on different uh, uh, infrastructure like on-prem and cloud. We do have micro gateways, but they have very, what do you say, very specific business use case that we are running there. Okay. Yep. And also related to the evaluation of various uh, API gateways, I also got a question whether you evaluated the Gravity API gateway platform also as part of the evaluation. Gravity came uh, into the picture last year. I would say they have started uh, the best version of their platform. Uh, uh, by that time, we were in the, what I would say, a journey to implement 4.x. Yes, we do have evaluated every time a new product comes into the market. We do evaluate. And yes, it has some great features. But for Eka, uh, we decided to go with 4 WSO24.0 right now. So yeah, we di did evaluation, but Gravity best version came a little bit later. Okay. All right, Anapama, I, th I think that concludes this webinar and, and the, the question and discussion uh, part of it. So thanks a lot to you for taking the time to be here and to present the EGA journey related to API management and API gateways. It was very interesting to hear about that. And we look forward to continue the work with you guys on, 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 on uh, streaming APIs and to manage them in the right way. So, yeah. and also thanks to all the attendees that, uh, that took, your, took the time to attend to this webinar today. I uh, wish everybody a great continued day and looking forward to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.